I am Noah Bly, and I am Robert Bly and Carol Bly's third child. Um, this video is about Robert Bly in Lacupaaro County. And so I think I've been, I've been asked to just give a little introduction, and I think the most important thing to know in Lacupaaro County is that Robert Bly was a terrible farmer. He was a terrible farmer from the beginning. So his father, my grandfather, Jacob Bly, was a great farmer. And he, he, is, his family, he and his family, they, they gathered up more farmland and did a great job. And uh, as my uncle, um, James, and my father, Robert, were brought up to be farmers, they would uh, participate in all aspects of it. And um, clearly, though, my father had different trajectory. Robert Bly is a pretty amazing writer and poet who grew up in Lacoparle County um, as a farm boy and developed into a highly imaginative, groundbreaking poet, writer, activist, uh, leader of a men's movement, and is known all over the world uh, and certainly all over this country. His work often refers to everyday things and nature and the world around him right here in Lacopaaro, but it's imbued with a lot of different layers of meaning and a depth that's quite powerful. His clothes and the music. Um, he would sometimes play a dulcimer or some kind of a auto harp or something and try and do music with the, with the poetry, which works well for the poetry. The wind one brilliant day called to my soul with an odor of jasmine. And the wind said, in return for the odor of my jasmine, I'd like all the odor of your roses. I'm surprised that he's become a celebrity. I would never have expected that. And uh, I did not uh, think that uh, he had anything outstanding about him. But you know, the, the best thing I can say about Bly, at one time, I, he was just a reg, you know, ordinary kid. But uh, what I, the best thing I can say about Bly is one time he said, he had said something about how he had read that the, somewhere in the Bible maybe, or some religious saying that your creator has given you talents. And when the time comes when you die and you meet your creator, he's going to ask, what have you done with all the talents I gave you? And Bly has lived to the full and rewarding by giving back the talents that he was given. When I knew him, his name was Bob. He came in at freshman in high school uh, and he was trying to be the best boy ever. And he was always well-dressed and he and his brother came to high school as freshmen. And we didn't know him because he would have been to country school and the country kids would come in and it was a, an uphill struggle for people to get together. But he and his brother came in as very privileged kids, we thought, because his dad had bought them a car, freshman in high school. He was full, I thought of him as being full of fun in high school. He also played in the band, by the way. He just, he was involved with every, every organization there was. <clears throat> but as he grew older, he has grown so much more serious about life itself. Robert was a young person who had a very, a very strong inner life, which didn't relate necessarily to the surroundings that he was in. That's not to say that there aren't people out in Western Minnesota who are like that. There are others. He happened to have a considerable, considerable amount of talent that 
uh, helped him express himself in that way. A and I think that, especially in his early poetry, but in later poetry too, the impact of being in the countryside and nature and having, being, interacting with um, the fields and the forests around you um, is, is, becomes part of your inner life and you take those images and, uh, that, are, that are external that others might e not even see in the same way and they affected him in, in that way. I can't imagine him, how he changed and he became uh, protesting against the war. He, be, he, he was not establishment when, later on, but at the time he was very much establishment. In this war, for the first time that we've had this disgusting business of counting up every little small Vietnamese body we can find and counting the heads and arms and adding them up. The pictures I've seen when he was at Harvard, it was all black and very, of course, he's lean and mean and, and tough looking and very dark. But then he starts to, to get into almost hippie looking clothes and he, very colorful stuff. Everywhere we go, someone would introduce Robert Bly, the poet Robert Bly, and he would read poems and I would sort of be there and maybe suggest, you know, read the seal poem, Daddy. That was my favorite poem, which actually is my kid's favorite poem too. But when we got back to Madison in Lackey Powell County, he was Bob Bly. Bob, how you doing? The move back to, to Madison takes Bly out of the New York East Coast uh, desire to be successful uh, to an acceptance of what he is and what his place is. Carol and Bob lived out in the country. We'd go out there for dinner. And he became more interesting then. And then he became quite a bit different than he was in high school. He, he and my brother, they enjoyed having plays and uh, acting up. I think in a, small, this, in a small town in this area, I would think that this is quite a conservative place out here, in my way, in my, my way of thinking. And my brother and Bob were not conservative. They, they were pretty colorful. Robert Bly was a man in his own world, in an artistic world. And the, the majority of this community is not in the artistic world. They are in an agricultural, old, pioneer, monthly survival world. And so uh, because of that, I think is why uh, we, we, just, we just can't, when I say we, I mean the others that don't care for him and his poetry. And so they, uh, I think because of that, that it's, it's two different cultural worlds. We just don't see it. <laughs> it just does not grab me. <laughs> Everybody knew him, so it was, that's Robert. It's just, that's who he was. And so everybody was, I mean, Madison is a very, very kind town. Everybody is very kind. Um, but he wasn't one of, he just was different. And you know, I don't, I don't think anybody was cruel or judgmental. It was just, that's Robert. He'd always been like that. In fact, it was Bob's wife, Carol, that stimulated us to develop the Prairie Art Center by the old Lutheran Church and uh, have a place just for entertainments. And that was wonderful. They first of all had a uh, play out in their barn. It was really fun. And after that, and they heard the appreciation, you know, how much people enjoyed it and that, they said, we've got to have some center in Madison where people can have this. Their love for theater and literary work and how it really should impact people's everyday lives. And they made that kind of come to life with the help of the community here. And now the community carries it forward. That's cool. That's great. There's uh, bookcases where the, where the books were and also other uh, strange objects. So he would look for objects to be inspired by. And that might be a, an old stump, um, that might be the snow in the field, or it might be a crow that he found dead on the side of the road. But there was times when he was very, very serious. Um, when us kids would, you know, we weren't to go to the study. We weren't allowed to go hang out by the study when he was working. And, but 
what you tell kids not to do something. So we'd sneak up and peek in the windows and he would come out and go, ah, you know, do his scary voice and we'd all go running and screaming and we learned not to do that anymore. One of the things where Bly was, was fortunate was in the 70s and 80s, people got interested in feeling poetry and also in nature. I was always fascinated by, I mean, it never occurred to me that you'd sit on the end of a pickup and watch the wind or watch the storm or things like that, and then be writing about how it touches you in certain ways. I had never heard of anybody doing that until he did. Uh, the other thing that I think is just generally critiquing the system. And Robert Bly says, how strange to think of giving up all ambition, you know? I see with such clear eyes. So for, for my generation, you know, don't try to be a success. Don't try to do what the system tells you to do. Well, my mother, Marianna Manfred, was married to my father, Frederick Manfred, the Minnesota writer. She was also a writer, and she used to say he's our Norwegian uncle uh, because that's how it felt to be around Robert. It didn't feel like um, some literary person arriving to talk to my father, Frederick. They were both very down-to-earth people, men, and actually didn't talk about literature all that much. His poetry is filled with images from the land and from farming. But, but so is his writing. That's pretty cool that it, he didn't just uh, make his farm kind of a retreat for himself, but rather he offered back to the community um, his love, and I think Carol Bly too, together. You know, that's what legacy is, and he is leaving an amazing gift for everyone that will outlast him for generations to come. I'm very proud to be related to someone with that gift of a legacy. In late September, many voices tell you, you will die. That leaf says it, that coolness, all of them are right. There are many souls, what can they do about it? Nothing. They're already part of the invisible. Our souls have been longing to go home anyway. Come on, they say. Slade, lock the door, let's go. Our souls have been longing to go home anyway. Come on, they say. Lock the door. Slade, let's go. But the body doesn't agree. The body says, we buried a little iron ball under that tree. Let's go get it. I feel like Robert Bly was a person who lived his imagination to the fullest. He was brave enough to bring out into the open in his writing and in his life all the kinds of wild and creative ideas that he had. He might have kept a few inside, but it certainly seems that uh, he was courageous. He went into the dark and brought it out. He spoke about his own self and he invoked the imagination of the world and the dream world, and he brought it right out into the open. I think he was trying to live his values. He's really uh, trying to take in tons of ideas, and what better place to do that than in a schoolhouse in Madison, Minnesota. It's hard to grasp how much generosity is involved in letting us go on breathing when we contribute Nothing valuable but our grief. Each of us deserves to be forgiven, if only for our persistence in keeping our small boat afloat when so many have gone down in the storm. Visit pioneer.org slash postcards to catch up on missed episodes and to find out more about your favorite segments. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. 
Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts, offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota. Explore hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for a great vacation or a place to hold an event. ExploreAlex.com. Tri-State Brain and Spine Institute. With locations in Alexandria, Edina, Crookston, and Maple Grove. Doctors dedicated to evaluating and treating all types of brain and spine problems, no matter how complex.